see this list? I was looking at a list of athletes of domestic violence. And if y'all can look at this list, this is where I became angry. Let me slide it down. So. Let me slide it all the way to the top. Now, I don't know if y'all can see this, but if y'all can see this list, you know, and as you scroll in the list, you see, okay, Australian tennis player. You see Miles Bridges. And they got a big write up on his ass. You see, I don't know who the hell this is. And I can't say that name either. Now, of course, you see Floyd. You don't see any pictures of him doing it, a video of him doing it. You see Randy Moss. But Randy Moss' lawsuit was later dropped. So he was accused of it, but it was later dropped. Then you have Chad. You have Manny Ramirez, Dennis Rodman. You have OJ. OJ did it? No, that's how they said it on the movie. But that's OJ. Jim Brown, but the charges were dropped. Jim Brown, but the charges were dropped. Uh, Dwight Goodman. Rasheed Wallace. Um, you got Jason Kidd. Uh, you got Jose Canseco. And whoever the heck this is. Kevin Williams. Daryl Strawberry. Of course, you got Ray Rice. You got Dez Bryant. Warren Sapp, but the charges were later dropped. Uh, they got Brandon Marshall. Randy Starks. Who, is, who the hell is this dude? I usually thought she was juking. Jo, Javon Blank, Blank Bleacher. Oh, Lord. This boy did the ultimate to everybody. Lord, have mercy. Jesus. Tito Ortiz. Bernard King. But the charges were later dropped. But the charges were later dropped. Lawrence Phillips. He was also arrested for domestic violence several times in 2005. Oh, Lawrence Phillips. Yeah, boy, you look, you look a little crazy. Anyway. Bobby Cox. But the charges were later dismissed. San Antonio Holmes. But the charges were later dropped. San Antonio Holmes, but the charges were later dropped. Chris Cook, but the but was acquitted in 2012. Brother was acquitted. Chris Cook was acquitted. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now I didn't even know Stone Cold uh, was charged with domestic violence. And, and, and this is another reason why I became upset. It's like, man, so many black players are on this list. And they make sure we know their names. Stephen A talks about he get up there and he does his thing. I don't remember Stephen A talking about Stone Cold Steve at all. Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone Cold, a uh, Stone Cold. Uh, Stephen A was already on air. I don't see him mentioning nothing about Stone Cold. Okay, Daryl. What's his name? Daryl Washington. AJ Jefferson. But you get the gist of what I'm saying. Frosty Rucker. But you get the gist of what I'm saying. They, a lot of these men are black, right? So it would give one the illusion that if you date a black man, you're going to get beat. Based on the coverage, based on the news coverage alone, 
it gives the impression that if you date a black man, you done you done dated a beast. And it's because it's not covered properly. It's not covered fairly. And the reason why the title is what it is, the title says the Me Too movement, even know its place, stays silent during Dana White's slap. Dana White slapped a woman, a rich, powerful white man. And by all the standards of what I've been hearing in the media, they don't like rich, powerful white men. So this would be a time for the Me Too movement and everybody to jump on and pounce on this man because he did something that was despicable. He did something that if any other athlete, any black athlete would have done this to a black woman, they would have made it seem like he did this to every black woman in the world. And then all the women around the world would have been shouting and clamoring and they would cancel a black man. Dana White seems to be above the shouts and the clamor of the Me Too movement. So one must ask, is the Me Too movement only to stop or destroy black men at their worst moments and when they make a mistake? Because Dana White is at his worst moment and he made a mistake. But what he was able to say is he's able to say, I don't care what other people think of me. In a Me Too movement client, imagine Floyd Mayweather, when he was accused of domestic violence, him saying, I don't care what someone think of me. And it wasn't even on video. There was no pictures. There was no nothing. This is man is on video slapping his wife multiple times. Oh, and get this, by the way, he's starting a slap lead. So maybe he used his wife as the first contestant of his slap lead. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look it up. Dana White is starting a slap lead and premiering. I think that was the way that they was breaking the news. Just, I don't know. But it seems like he will be unscathed by this situation. And it's not an allegation. Let me remind you, this is not an allegation. We got him on video. But yeah, this is why we think this good thing about white men and this bad thing about black men, because even the media is complicit in this white supremacy. The Me Too movement is complicit. And you yourself is complicit because so many women are being used to destroy black men now that they can't even see that they're just being used. Now, you can say what you want, but this man's white wife ain't out advocating for him to be canceled. I don't know what that means. She's not out on Gail King doing no interview. I don't know what that means. I'm just stating the facts. But I do know this. There's a difference in the media coverage. There's a difference in the attacks. There's a difference in the cancellation because Dana White is going to be able to move on, continue to make money, continue to promote, and the media will not mention this ever again. Once this blow over, they won't bring this up every time he's uh, announcing for a fight. Oh, but if he was a black man, every time they'll bring this up. If he was a black man, this, it'll be a snowball effect. Of every woman he's around or, or say he beat him. But this is going to blow over. Dana White is going to move on. He's not going to lose one sponsorship. He's not going to lose one endorsement. So what does that say about the people pretending like they care about domestic violence? What does that say about all the women that they're just attacking black men when they do it? Because it's wrong but they're not going to say anything to this white man when he did it. And it's on camera. And this Chad Wheeler video, even worse. She was attacked by former Seattle Seahawks player Chad Wheeler is speaking out. 
Last week, you may recall, Wheeler pleaded not guilty to three charges, including domestic violence assault. This guy thinks he's not guilty. This guy thinks he's not guilty. Wait till you see the pictures of what this man did to this young lady's face. And he pled not guilty. Beating a woman like this, he can't, he's too much of a punk to take responsibility of. It. He said, I didn't do it. What? His ex-girlfriend showed up in court to face him. She says that Wheeler is still a threat to her safety. And now she's sharing her story in an exclusive interview with CBS This Morning. She spoke with our national correspondent, Jerika Duncan. Good morning to you, Jerika. Good morning to you, Gail. Her name is Aaliyah Taylor. And it was a leaked photo of her injuries that made national headlines. Well, now she's ready to share her story. And most importantly, she wants domestic violence survivors to know they're not alone. We want to warn you, some of what you're about to see and hear is graphic. I still have to regularly get, like, my concussion checked. I have bolts and still on a steel plate i'm gonna have forever in my arm i'm gonna have gonna have to deal with this the rest of my life that's the reality for 27 year old Aaliyah taylor after she said yes that's you heard it correct bolts and steel plates hold on y'all but yeah you heard it correct look at that face you heard it correct. She has to have bolts and steel plates in her arm. She still has to get her concussion check. Meaning this dude beat the brakes off of her. But this is no joke. This woman was beat like she was a man. And they didn't run this story. People forget about it. They don't talk about it in interviews. People don't bring his name up. He's probably married to a white woman right now. The coverage is diff different. The outcome is different. The media backlash is different. Everything is different when it's coming to from a white male, especially when he does it to a black woman or any woman, as you can see with Dana White. So this Me Too movement seems like it's designed just to get black males. It's my opinion. Based on the evidence, it's a strong opinion. I still have to regularly get like my concussion checked. I have bolts and still and a steel plate. I'm going to have forever in my arm. I'm going to have going to have to deal with this the rest of my life. That's the reality for 27 year old Aaliyah Taylor after she says she was attacked by her then boyfriend Chad Wheeler. Taylor says the pair dated for six months with barely any arguments. We were like best friends. We did everything together. I even introduced him to my family. We would babysit my nephew together. But according to Taylor, that all changed on January 22nd starting with a text from Wheeler that he'd shaved his head. He loved, just loved his long hair, um, refused to cut it, and it, it surprised me and it worried me. I came home and Chad was trying to play it off as if he just kind of cut his hair, but then as time went on throughout the day, he started going downhill emotionally. Taylor later told police it was the beginning of a manic episode, adding she knew Wheeler suffered from bipolar disorder. Then, according to Taylor, Wheeler snapped into a dark place. And he, um, he stood up and he told me to bow down and I asked him why and he, he didn't respond. He just told me to bow down again and I told him no and he he immediately grabbed my neck and that's um, that's when things began. Do you recall what happened after that? When he grabbed my neck, he, he threw me on the bed and um, I remember looking up at him and asking him, please stop, Chad, it's me. And um, I just immediately knew the look in his eyes, that was it. Taylor, who is 5'9", says that's when Wheeler, 6'7", weighing more than 300 pounds, tried to choke her. According to Taylor, she blacked out twice before the attack was over. I had touched my face, and I looked down, and there was, there was blood on my hand. And I, I remember getting up and running to the bathroom. Chad was standing by the bed by the doorway, and he was sipping his smoothie. I was like, wow, you're, you're still alive. Please help me out. I'm going to die. Taylor says she then locked herself in the bathroom, called 911, and texted her family and Wheeler's father for help. According to police reports, it took three officers and two sets of handcuffs to restrain Wheeler. Police said Wheeler kept apologizing as he was arrested. Do you think that Chad's behavior is directly connected to a mental health issue? 
Look how many officers they say it took to arrest him. This is a big, large, gigantic man. He didn't get choked to death. He didn't get shot. Three, four officers got to get this man down to arrest him. You know, me with my size, I wouldn't dare try to buck up that police officer just because of my size. So this man is large as well. He's like six, seven, 300 pounds. I just thought I'd point that out. Because the, the coverage is different. This is sad. 